today we have a treat. This is an Enox uh, Cinema Box 4 uh, giant sandbar thing. It seems to be dating from just before 2010, 2008 or so. And this was available on the German Amazon site and some eBay sellers from as far as I've been able to tell. And this seems to be one of those awful white van speakers camp type deals where we just shoved a million drivers in a lacquered box and called it. They sold it for 200 euros or perhaps more. So this thing's got a huge rated power consumption of 190 watts. It's got nine drivers. But I'm not sure if the two subwoofer looking things on the back are actually drivers. I suspect they might just be passive radiators. And to accommodate the six mid ranges, we've got a single dome tweeter in the front. So this doesn't seem to be quite a height of audio engineering and design, but it does look very impressive. Uh, even if we include the fact that it's been very wet, it's made out of MDF and it's literally coming apart. So this thing was thrown out, of course, as everything else around here. And someone's going to be effort of cutting the power cord, so we can't just plug it in and see what it does. So we're going to have to pull an EV plug on this thing and take it apart before we go any further. So it's obviously got a troidal transformer for a power supply in there, not for the most modern design. Probably doesn't have too good standby power consumption because I doubt they bothered putting a relay in there. But I actually am really curious to find out how this thing actually sounds. I am hoping it's not too broken. I hope we can get it running. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how the amplifier works as well, because it has both HDMI and what seems to be an analog surround sound input. So uh, we could actually have a ridiculously multi-channel amplifier in there, some kind of 5.1 thing. Uh, because this seems to be one of those things that's supposed to do it all. It's uh, got an quote unquote subwoofer in there. So let's waste no more time and get inside. So uh, to get into this thing, I was a bit of a bother. I started by trying to get the rear plate out, but uh, that just uh, revealed the uh, rather interesting Chinese audio amplifier. We'll take a look at that later. Uh, so I dug further and uh, tried to get the uh, bottom plate uh, DVD player unit out and that wouldn't work either until I finally realised that you have to rip the rubber feet off and undo the screws for the MDF base and underneath there, there were a couple of screws holding everything together. Uh, once those got off and I mongered some cables out, I could get the uh, DVD unit itself out, uh, even finding we got a free DVD in there. Madagascar. Uh, so with that we can finally uh, just uh, fix the power cord and uh, sort of that together it work. It's gonna work just fine. The strand relief was easily reusable so that's all fine. Uh, so uh, looking inside this thing a bit closer we do have just a s what seems to be a rather standard issue DVD player. I think the HDMI port there might just be an output rather than an input so I think as far as uh, audio inputs are concerned this is just going to be a purely analog multi-channel thing. Uh, looking at the amplifier though we have a whole bunch of channels so it really does have many channels to work with and the uh, woofers on the back which I suspected were passive radiators actually are real speakers you can kind of see the magnets if you poke your head in there. So on the amplifier board we've got a bunch of amplifier chips, uh, namely five TDA uh, 2030s and two 2050s. So that's going to be five for the various speakers uh, on the front side and the two big ones are probably for the rear facing woofers. As far as reasons for failure go though, I haven't been able to find anything really obvious in this thing. We have this capacitor on the DVD player logic unit power supply which has some conductive brown goop on it which could cause issues but no obviously broken caps or anything and even if we have a look at the power amplifier it does have incredibly shoddy build quality with dirt all over uh, but I haven't been able to find anything obviously exploded. Now we do have a fuse here which could be blown in case it's been run a bit too hard at some stage. I'm going to have to 
check that, but in case that's okay, I think we can just uh, plug the, plug this in and see if we can get some sound out of it, because I'm really curious to see how this monstrosity is going to perform. I'm expecting horrible. All right, before we do that, let's just have a quick look at the power amplifier assembly. So the most popping thing about this is these horrible, not properly tied down, dirty, disgusting 25 volt 6800 microfarad uh, big caps. These are garbage. I wonder if perhaps the reason this thing's t been tossed out because one of these has just kind of fallen off or failed, gone open circuit. Uh, this other one we've got two random transistors, probably a plus minus 15 volt regulator for the op amps because we do have a couple of uh, 4558 op amps hiding somewhere on the board. There's one and over there's another one. So we could have some buffering or filtering going on, perhaps the subwoofer in quotes, filter is uh, actually populated on this board. Uh, we have a real oddity in the layout of the speaker connectors because we have this row here which are speaker connectors but we've just got five of them. Uh, uh, so that's obviously not enough for the five channels and two subwoofers. Uh, to com complement that, we have two subwoofers sharing a ground, I believe, in this connector and then we have the positive eight for the left one all the way over there in a half populated plug. Okay, that is, that is interesting. And we also have this big connector going off to somewhere, I'm not quite sure where, and some power uh, feeding in from the uh, main board on the DVD player unit. Uh, I did check the transformer, uh, and that seems to be in a decent working order. I, uh, it measures just fine, it's a plus minus 14.3 uh, volt transformer dual windings. Uh, perhaps 200 VA or so rated, doesn't quite say, but the fuses are intact, so I don't think this is going to be an issue. So, let's get this thing up and running, see what's actually wrong with it. Alright, we've got it plugged in, waiting for power to be applied, power's on there. So, let's give it some 230 and see what comes out in smoke. Drawing 16 watts. Okay, that's interesting. So, front panel's entirely dead. I don't think the big caps have failed because that would give us more drastic noise. Uh, I'm betting something's wrong in the DVD unit, a part of this. Uh, possibly be paid by not starting, so let's uh, isolate this unit and uh, see what happens. It's going to be a bit annoying, I think, because we've got the display on the case and the wiring's really annoying to get at. No wonder they chose not to repair this thing. Right, so before we uh, move on to actually troubleshoot the DVD unit, I want to make sure the power amplifier is uh, still working. So you can see that these wires go to the power amplifier itself is the analog input, and if we grab those, we get plenty of humming noise. So we know we've got a living power amplifier in this thing, and the issue is definitely going to be in the DVD unit. So let's start from there. Right, so the obvious place to start is, of course, the power supply, and if I just put my finger on the transformer, it's actually getting a bit warm, so it's not entirely dead, so if we bring in the voltmeter, perhaps we can see if we've got some kind of an output voltage. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean uh, that it's working all right, but it could give us an indication. And five volts, and nothing, and 11.2-ish, 12, and negative 12, so we do have something coming out of that. It's not 100% dead. Mm, you know what? When I put my finger on this cap here, that's actually putting out heat. It's not getting it from a transformer, it's actually putting out heat. And put my finger on there, makes the speakers hum. So I am very suspicious of that cap. And with this terrible, trashy power supply, which has probably been on for years and years since we've obviously been using the remote with this, who on earth goes and turns off your sound bar on the power button. So I think I'm just going to take this out and replace this cluster of secondary side caps, measure this guy 
and see if that's the issue, because that could be such an obvious possible fault that it would be dumb to troubleshoot further without checking that at first. Because keep in mind, even though we might have 12 and 5 volts coming out of that just fine, uh, that it could be ripply and horrible, just enough to keep the power supply itself under regulation, but too noisy to satisfy the input of any voltage regulators coming after it. Alright, so I replaced the capacitor in the power supply and uh, not quite surprisingly it made no difference. So I moved on to heat treating the motherboard trying to see if it had bad caps, if there was a bad flash, if something had just driven it right across the margins and I'd be able to kick it back to life, able to check some voltages, but sadly it seems we have an entirely dead mainboard on our hands. So then I figured, okay, fair enough, uh, we can just uh, uh, very carefully remove that and uh, use the power amplifier, which is an entirely separate module to just perhaps get this thing playing one last time. Maybe we can turn it into uh, some kind of portable speaker. So I started ripping out the audio connector, only to find out that the analog input on the back just to run straight to the input to the power amplifier and it's even got an internal upmixing feature for uh, if you put a signal into the front channels it also goes out to the subwoofers so we barely even need to do anything with this and in fact if we just put this together and apply some signal to those inputs this thing will play even though it has no brain so that's excellent. Uh, let's just uh, do a bit of work to get the other speakers working as well. Because the upmixing feature only works on the front channels, uh, which are the middle speakers there. And uh, that, of course, does not employ our premium dome tweeter for the center channel. It actually has a speaker in there, it seems. So we need to do a bit of wiring to get signal to all the channels. And then we're pretty much good to go. This thing needs no more work. Now there's a bit of work here involved in getting this turned into a proper useful speaker because we need a volume control and we need to have all the channels. So uh, I started by just drilling a hole at a random spot to put a volume potentiometer and then I moved on to uh, reverse engineering the wiring diagram. It was very simple because everything was labeled. I just took the right and left channels and uh, uh, sold them into the input of a volume control and uh, um, then I proceeded to connect that to the output board which connects to the speaker. I connected the surround right and left channels to the right and left channels and I just uh, kind of connected the center with a tweeter to the right channel because I can't be bothered with mono down mixing. So uh, with that done we've basically got everything ready to go. We've got the board connected up with a long lead going to the potentiometer and then on to the connectors on the back of the unit. So uh, if I've done everything correctly and haven't uh, bodged anything too hard, uh, we should actually work. So let's give it a try. Right, and here's the setup. We've got our input going to my lab stereo here, going in there into the long cord into the volume control potentiometer, which is maxed for the time being, into our input board. and. In theory, we should have sound coming out of every speaker on this board once we turn the power on. So uh, let's see. I'm just going to go on fire. No fire, but the bad grinding kill the test area. So once the relay clicks, we should get some sound. And we don't. I've done something wrong. I've wired the volume control up backwards. Oh uh, well. Alright, I had actually wired the volume control up backwards, but it also connected up to the wrong input plug. So, uh, this time, it should actually work. Let's give it a go. And we've got audio. I do every single speaker on this box. Whether well, that's actually a good thing <laughs> it remains to be seen. 
It could actually sound better. It's uh, it could it could actually sound worse. It's performing better than I did expect. And uh, we do have a case open. And I did have a sneak peek. So the subwoofers don't subwoofers don't sound particularly impressive, but uh, the front speakers actually don't sound all that bad. I mean this. It's not hi-fi by any means, but it could really be useful as, you know, a frame the corner type pillar speaker. So I'm not, I'm not feeling I've wasted my time too much. This certainly could be a serviceable unit. God, you can get a lot of mid-range out of that. So uh, let's uh, maybe fix the volume control and uh, um, just put this thing back together in its new form. And there we have it, our horrible Chinese kabuki machine, all packed back together and playing sound through all of its nine drivers. Are you in favor of perfect, horrible, shiny Chinese volume knob to match? Oh, what a horrible piece of trash we have created. And the volume control goes the wrong way around. The center channel's the right channel, and uh, the left channel is like that's the left channel. Oh no, no, actually, they, those guys are the left channel, and uh, these guys are the right channel. <laughs> but you don't have this thing for stereo separation or sound quality at all. And geez, come on, it does look kind of impressive at a distance, though. I'm surprised, uh, but uh, yeah, it's running. Uh, it seems to have a lot of gain, which is very good. I need to keep it down very low in order to get it to play reasonably loud, which is a good thing if you just want to have it as a kind of uh, stick in a corner type speaker for quick uh, audio, uh, which is probably what I'm going to use it for unless I try to sell it to some poor fool. Uh, really, like this thing could be used just as pillow, you just flip it around 90 degrees, put it vertically somewhere, and uh, you have a decent speaker. The rear firing subwoofers are uh, probably going to do a decent job of that. On this ugly thing. Okay. The crossover is like retarded. It's, I don't know, 200 hertz or so. They g get no loudness at all out of them. Uh, this whole thing is a mess. An absolute mess. What a horribleness. But hey, it plays. Cheerio.